Good morning. I'm Jeff Edelman. I'm here with my good friend, Scott Brook, candidate for Coral Springs mayor. The election is on March 12th. Scott, when I saw you at the flag football field watching your grandson, we had a good conversation. I had no idea that you were thinking about throwing your hat back in the ring. Yeah, I actually had reached out to Mayor Campbell's law office a week before he passed uh, to talk to him about running in four years after he was term limited and to find out what his priorities would be. And of course, we had no idea that he would, you know, lose his life so so prematurely. Right. And then that is the reason that we're having the special election on March 12th to uh, fill the shoes of yes. our beloved uh, Mayor Skip Campbell. Well, it's a unique position for you, Scott, though, because you've already served is the mayor from 2006 to 2010, if, I, if I'm yes. correct. Yes. Well, um, I mean, a lot of people probably want to know, what is driving you to, to do this again? Uh, number one, I love our city. Mm -hmm. I, I love our, our kids. I've raised all five of my children here with Brenda. Uh, it's been amazing for us. We love the schools. Uh, we love the public safety. Uh, we love the people. And uh, I had a great experience when I was the mayor. Other than being a dad and being Brenda's husband, it's my favorite job I've ever had to be the mayor. So to have the opportunity to lift our city again and reconnect our residents, um, bring in business to town, really spur economic development, and a few other priorities are big, um, big commitments for me. And I have the opportunity and the time to give back. I have fantastic partners here at the law firm and I have got great support at home. And my youngest daughter, Sammy, she's 18 years old. She's about to go off to college and have a little bit more time to give a little bit more back to our awesome community. Well, let me ask you this because again, you, you haven't served on the commission or as mayor since 2010. Yes. Is there anything in particular that uh, drove you to this decision to want to be a public servant again? Uh, well, at this particular time, there is a tremendous void in leadership in the city. And Mayor Campbell was somebody that was a bridge builder. He built consensus. He was able to be agile and acquire new information and, uh, and change uh, what he thought. And for instance, in regards to the city hall, Mm -hmm. uh, and I think City Hall is what spurred the next round of economic development and the Cornerstone Project. So while there are some citizens that feel disconnected and maybe uneducated about why the city did certain things, I have a unique ability to connect with citizens, bring citizens to the table. And uh, I actually think that if I didn't run for mayor, I would be doing a disservice uh, because I... I have a lot of things to bring to the table and a lot of amazing people to bring to the table that also want to contribute to our city, including citizens that don't even live here. They either work here or they play here or they have family here. And there's a unique aspect about Coral Springs that makes people feel special. And I just want to serve. If you're privileged to uh, win the election on March 12th, what are your top priorities as so, Coral Springs mayor? Uh, one major priority is to see what we can do to keep property taxes low and potentially even lower the property taxes. And I know that won't be easy, uh, but I think it's possible during my nine years or so of service, we were able to lower tax rates by about 21%. And we still had great public safety. We had AAA credit ratings. Uh, we had a great satisfaction, you know, uh, that was supported by the citizens and the studies that we did. And that would be my number one commitment. Number two is to enhance our public safety. I think our police and fire, they're second to none. Mm -hmm. And there's still some underlying sense of insecurity because of the tragedy that befell our community last February. And I want to I, I want to help build security for our for our students especially, but for all families. I know that we need to do some things differently with our schools. And one of my ideas is to ask some of the retired law enforcement officers and retired military that live in and around Coral Springs, would they be kind enough to be an SRO at no cost to the city, other than what we might supply them for equipment. And a 
apparently there are many retired law enforcement officers that have chosen Coral Springs to live. I think it's possible that they might want to give back that way. So it's something that I'd like to broach. And my third priority is economic development. Yeah, I want to go to something you said about community involvement. Yes. Engaging people, getting people involved in community projects, getting people involved in the government. Yeah. I know how passionate you are about that. I, what, uh, what drives that? So years ago, I was single living on the beach in Hollywood. I had been divorced from my first wife. Uh, it was 1994. And I thought, what do I want to do with my life to give back? And I thought about where I was living in Hollywood. I didn't know my mayor. I didn't know my state representative. I didn't know any commissioners. I didn't know who represented me. And I blamed half of it on them, whoever they were. And I took the other half of the blame. And at that time, I decided I'm going to look into politics and serving in politics. And I wanted to be somebody that would connect people with government, educate people about government, and bring citizens to the table so that they could have greater say. I'm an attorney for a living. I'm an advocate. Mm -hmm. So I love giving people a voice and being a voice for people. And uh, when I became a city commissioner, that we had what was called a customer-involved government priority. And for all the other priorities, there were committees, but there was no committee for customer-involved government. So I asked my colleagues, can we start a customer-involved government committee? They said, sure. And actually from that, many of our following commissioners and mayors, including Vice Mayor Vince Bocard, who's running in this race, served on the CIGC, on the Citizens Government Committee that I established. So I plan to enhance that committee uh, we started a Citizens Government Academy when I was in office. I believe that's going strong. And I have other ideas to bring people to the table, including a budget academy, a mayor's youth cabinet, and a team commission. Could you tell everybody a little bit about some of the uh, youth outreach that you've done in the city? Sure. Uh, one of my favorite things that I've done is started project leadership with my buddy, Dr. Cliff Fruit Handler, uh, who unfortunately passed away many years ago. But we started in 2003 and we provide a leadership program where we train our youth to become leaders and lead the program itself. So we actually have our 29th leadership program coming up. Uh, it's starting May, March 6th, uh, goes March 13th, March 19th. And we have about 40 students uh, that we are anticipating taking the course, it's free. Uh, we provide free food from local restaurants like La Fontana and Nick's. Uh, Tavolino's has donated in the past. And it's a great way for our youth to be engaged, learn about themselves, about government, about college, public speaking, communication, and finance. So that's one of the ways that I've been engaging with the youth. If somebody wants to get involved in that program, how can they get information? Uh, they can go to pnanetwork.org. Okay. Uh, they can contact me on my cell phone at 954-494-9872. Again, that's 954-494-9872. And matter of fact, in a little while, I'm headed over to the charter school to promote project leadership to them. And hopefully I'll get into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas trying to reach Mrs. Cutler. So if anybody, if Mrs. Cutler is around your neighborhood, ask her if I can come in uh, maybe on Monday before the program begins. From your prior tenure as mayor and as a commissioner, what are some of the things that you're most proud of, Scott? Um, well, one of the things I'm very proud about is in my first three months in office, I was presented with an opportunity to give every mayor and retired commissioner that had served for five years free lifetime health insurance benefits. And when I first heard that, I didn't even know that we got health insurance benefits as a commissioner. I wasn't aware of that either. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so I said, no, 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 that's a conflict of interest. Um, that's that's not gonna work for me. I, I didn't come to this office so I could have that kind of benefit. And uh, the city attorney assured me, no, it's not a conflict of interest. I said, well, it still feels that way, so let me think on it, and I abstained from the vote. And then it came back to us a couple months later, uh, and I had done my research, and. I found out, no, it's not a conflict of interest, and I voted no, and I was adamant about it. And so was Vice Mayor Rhonda Calhoun at the time. And before you knew it, it was supposed to come back, but it never came back to us. And I believe that vote early in my career 
uh, not only was unselfish, but it saved the city millions of dollars over time. Oh, no doubt. And then my second uh, most proudest accomplishment was uh, being able to be the mayor at the time that we won the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. Uh, we got to meet President Bush in the White House and the Oval Office. Uh, I was there with our city manager at the time and Vice Mayor Vince Bocard. Uh, it was a great experience and we were rewarded, recognized for our performance excellence. And we were the first city in the nation to be acknowledged for having these key intended outcomes and measures of performance that really had us perform like a, a well-gelled business. And, and I plan to bring that back to the city. I plan to help us to become a city of excellence once again. I think we're very strong, uh, but I think we can take our city to greater heights and with a lot of collaboration, with a lot of citizen input, and especially with small businesses that are already here, I think we can do amazing things together. Scott, what would you say to somebody who, who just went through a very bruising election cycle mm -hmm. in November? Uh, politics have never been probably more toxic. I know we keep saying that, but yeah. it seems like they're getting more and more and more. Uh, and now we have this special election. It's a local election, March 12th. What can you tell people? Why should they, why should they care? Uh, there's nothing that affects you more than local government. So while so many of us believe, well, you have to vote for the president, you have to vote for the United States Center, and obviously, you know, they affect our lives on a daily basis. Uh, local politics affects us on a daily basis. We're the ones that set the millage rate for your property taxes. We're the ones that provide you with the public safety of police and fire. Uh, we're the ones that provide you with neighborhood beautification or not. Um, I can't think of any stronger reason than to vote in this election than look at where you are in your life and is there something that you might want to have changed? Or alternatively, are there lots of things in Coral Springs that you love and you want to make sure you keep it that way? So I think whether or not you're on one side or the other, you should come out and vote and be heard. And, and if it's not for me, vote for one of the other candidates. It's so important. When I ran the first time, we had 93 out of every 100 registered voters stay home. And one of the commitments we made was to advertise the election and we wound up boosting voter turnout to about 15% in 2004. Here in this election, there's only one seat, it's mayor's seat. I think we'd be lucky if we had 12% voter turnout. So the challenge to those of you watching and those of you that may be sharing uh, this, hopefully, and you will share, is let people know there's a special election for mayor. Uh, let people know that they have an opportunity to be heard. If they're not here, they can still go to the website, BrowardSOE.org, and request an absentee ballot and have your voice heard. You know, pick pick one of us. Uh, but I urge you, don't stay home. Don't, don't stay home and think that this doesn't matter because it matters. It matters to us. It matters to future generations. And the polling places, I believe you posted on your um elect scott brook facebook page where people can vote or they can go to the supervisor of elections page right they can go to the website there is no early voting so many of you have voted at the library before uh, you cannot vote early at the library and that library may be one of the polling places i don't recall offhand uh, but we have the polling places on our website it's on the broward soe website and if you have any questions and you're not sure and it's election day or before, contact me directly, 954-494-9872. Send me a text. Tell me your name. Tell me your address. And within one hour, I'll get you the polling place that you're supposed to be at. Scott, do you have any events coming up uh, next I, week? I do. Uh, we have a few events. So we have an event this evening. We're going to be at Big Bear from 6 to 730. It's going to be a great networking event. I expect about 80 to 90 people there. We have an event at Los Tacos tomorrow that's sponsored by Hector Lombard, a former MMA champ who's been a, come wow. out, a phenomenal volunteer for my campaign. That's um, really great. So that's at Los Tacos on the corner of Coral Springs Drive and Royal Palm tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, we're walking Saturday and Sunday at noon. That information is on our website. And then on uh, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, we're phone banking. Also information on the website. And the last uh, fundraiser is Tuesday night at Deja Blue in Parkland. 
And one of the reasons we chose Parkland uh, at 5.30 Tuesday night is because for me, it's very important that we connect our communities. We're both communities that need healing. We're both communities that were tremendously impacted from the tragedy. And I think if we can come together, we can lift each other. And uh, I, I sure would love that. And I think our communities would love that. And to interconnect our kids a little bit more, I think would be wonderful. And one of my ideas along those lines are some sporting events like Scott Ferruja and Doug Eaton have done in the past. So, Well, thank you for uh, meeting with me today, Scott. I really appreciate it. It's great to, you know, always great to talk with you. Thank and you. Same here. I encourage everybody to get out on March 12th. Support Scott Brook for mayor of Coral Springs. Uh, if you have any questions, you can look at the uh, page that I posted up there, electscottjbrook.com. He's given his cell phone number multiple times, and I think that he would be a real asset for our city, uh, for the void that's left by uh, Skip Campbell. I saw actually today that I believe uh, his family is supporting you. His family have endorsed me, and I'm very proud to receive that. I saw that about a half hour ago. Yeah. So, Scott, great seeing you. Thank Thanks you. so Same much. Here. Take Thank care. you. Thank you.